In this presentation, the procedure for the reduction and fixation of an intraarticular distal tibia and fibular fracture will be demonstrated. Upon completion of this exercise, you should be able to identify the clinical indications and contraindications, describe the correct patient positioning, identify the appropriate reduction techniques, and explain the steps used to perform the procedure. Clinical indications include cases of pilon fracture where there is a displaced C2 fracture with appropriate soft tissue envelope, need for a medial buttress plate, and initial displacement. Contraindications include cases where soft tissue is unsatisfactory for direct surgical exposure, risks of surgery exceed expected benefits because of patient's general condition, and Elevated local and systemic risk factors for impaired healing are present. Preoperative planning for the procedure includes assessing the condition of the soft tissue swelling by palpating the skin over the surgery site, prepping the entire leg from toes to upper thigh. The possible need for autologous bone graft is anticipated by preparing a donor site and draping it if necessary. The patient is placed in the supine position with a pad under the buttock to slightly rotate the leg internally. The leg is elevated or placed on a square cushion. A tourniquet is always applied, but inflated at the surgeon's discretion. Potentially, wound healing could be safer if this surgery was done without a tourniquet. The instruments required to insert the 3.5mm self-tapping cortex screws are the 3.5-2.5 mm double drill guide, the drill bit 3.5 mm diameter, the drill bit 2.5 mm diameter, the depth gauge, and the screwdriver hexagonal small 2.5 mm diameter with groove and holding sleeve. The instruments required for the locking screw insertion procedure include the bending pin for LCP plates 3.5 with thread, the LCP drill sleeve 3.5 for drill bits 2.8 mm diameter, the LCP drill bit 2.8 mm diameter, the handle for torque limiter, screwdriver shaft, hexagonal, and the torque limiter 1.5 Newton meters. After the bone model has been positioned in the clamp, the first step will be to use the lag screw technique to reduce and fix the simple fracture of the fibula. In doing so, the displaced anterolateral fragment of the tibia will be reduced indirectly due to the anterior syndesmotic ligaments, which are usually intact. The forceps is used to reduce the simple fracture of the fibula anatomically. As a first step, a lag screw will be inserted perpendicularly to the fracture surface. The 3.5 mm drill bit is inserted through the 3.5 mm end of the double drill guide and used to drill a glide hole in the near cortex. The 2.5 mm end of the double drill guide and the 2.5 mm drill bit are used to drill a hole into the far cortex, which is measured with the depth gauge. A 3.5 mm self-tapping cortex screw is inserted. The reduction forceps is now removed. Next, the LCP one-third tubular plate is positioned on the fibula and held in position with forceps. The 2.5 mm end of the double drill guide is used to drill a hole distally, which is measured with the depth gauge. A 3.5 mm self-tapping cortex screw is inserted. The reduction forceps is repositioned to the proximal end. The drilling procedure is repeated. With the LCP one-third tubular plate fixed in position, the locking screws can now be introduced distally and proximally. The LCP drill sleeve 3.5 for drill bits 2.8 mm diameter is inserted distally. The hole is drilled and is measured with the depth gauge. The torque limiting screwdriver 1.5 Newton meters is used to insert a 3.5 mm diameter locking screw. The process is repeated proximally and another 3.5 mm diameter locking screw is inserted. If the bone is very osteoporotic, two locking screws might not be sufficient. The cortex screws should be replaced by locking screws. 
Final tightening is done manually with the torque limiting screwdriver to prevent any over tightening or jamming of the screw. An audible click indicates that the limit of the torque has been reached. At this stage of the exercise, the bone is repositioned in the clamp. After exposing the distal tibia and ankle joint through an anteromedial incision, the articular surface is inspected. The large anterolateral fragment is anatomically reduced. It is held in place with the large pointed reduction forceps and a K-wire. After drilling the glide and thread holes, a cortex screw with washer is inserted as a lag screw and the fragment is fixed through interfragmentary compression. As an alternative to the cortex screw, a 4mm partially threaded cancellous screw can be used. The reduction forceps and K-wire are removed. Once the articular fracture has been anatomically fixed for absolute stability, the comminution is bridged using a MEPO technique. After verifying the overall axial alignment with image intensification, the pre-contoured distal tibia LCP is introduced by sliding it subcutaneously along the medial aspect of the tibia. A bending pin is screwed into the most distal hole of the LCP to facilitate positioning. The plate is preliminarily held in place with K-wires, first proximally and then at the distal end. In the clinical situation, the correct overall alignment of the joint block and diaphysis is checked under image intensification, as the metaphyseal comminution is reduced indirectly. To achieve proper alignment, the LCP is fixed with cortex screws proximally and distally. The 2.5mm end of the double drill guide and a 2.5mm diameter drill bit are used to drill a hole which is measured with the depth gauge. The universal drill guide 3.5 can also be used to centralize the drill bit into the plate hole. A cortex screw is inserted, first proximally with the small hexagonal screwdriver. This screw insertion procedure is repeated at the distal end. Here it can be seen that the LCP is being used indirectly as a reduction tool to reduce the fracture. The alignment and angulation of the distal fragment are optimized and secured using a cortex screw, which can be replaced with a locking screw after the subsequent locking screws have been inserted. If the fracture becomes displaced, a pointed clamp is used to attain the required reduction before tightening the screw. Ensure that the fragments are aligned in the relevant views. The locking screws are inserted at this stage. The LCP drill sleeve 3.5 for drill bits 2.8 mm diameter is placed distally onto the LCP plate. The hole is drilled with the 2.8 mm drill bit, the drill sleeve removed and the hole is measured with the depth gauge. The 3.5 mm locking head screws are inserted primarily with the power drive, however they are not fully seated. This screw insertion procedure is repeated to insert a locking screw proximally. Once the locking screws have been placed distally and proximally, the fracture is fixed. The K-wires are now removed. Further locking screws are inserted proximally and distally as necessary. Final tightening is done manually with the torque limiting screwdriver to prevent any over tightening or jamming of the screw. An audible click indicates that the limit of the torque has been reached. If the large lateral fragment is still significantly displaced, it can be reduced and if needed, a reduction screw can be used to approximate it. But the fragment may not fit anatomically. Here, the final alignment of the fibula and tibia can be seen. Observe that the articular surface has now been restored while maintaining alignment of the tibial comminution by bridge plating. You should now be able to identify the clinical indications and contraindications, describe the correct patient positioning, identify the appropriate reduction techniques, and explain the steps used to perform the procedure.